Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. I absolutely loved this conversation with my guest today, Rachel Zurer. She showed up with so much beautiful presence, such honesty, and she was so real, which is something that I find rare and have seen in myself that I haven't been real nearly as much as I would aspire to. Real about the nitty, raw, gritty reality of my experience. And wow, did Rachel show me how beautiful this really is. This is a magical conversation. Let me tell you a little more about Rachel. Rachel Zur is a clarity ninja on a mission to fill the world with more presence. She believes too many coaches and healers leak energy when it comes to marketing their services. That's why she supports presence-led service providers to attract their ideal clients while feeding their aliveness. As a copywriter and visibility coach, she believes you can be seen, be impactful, and be yourself. Her messaging and marketing clients include some of the industry's top presence-led coaches. Before founding Magic Words Marketing in 2020, she spent a decade as a magazine editor and writer, including at Conscious Company Media, Backpacker, and Wired. Her other passions include vinyasa yoga, authentic relating, circling, soul craft, ecstatic dance, and the 15 commitments of conscious leadership. She's also currently studying biodynamic cranial sacral therapy. She lives, works, and plays outside of Boulder, Colorado. I'm pleased to introduce you to Rachel. Why, well, hello, Rachel, and welcome to the Wildspire podcast. I'm so happy to have you here today. Mm-hmm. Hey, Stephanie, I'm really happy to be here too. And you're bringing with you, um, if you're watching the video, Rachel's bringing with her the, or if you're listening and not seeing the video, you'll see she's got this like desert midwestern theme going on down to your earrings and i love Mm. that you're bringing that with you because my my mind's been on durango colorado today (laughs) i'm feeling a visit to my fam so anyway i'm glad you're hearing that Mm. so when we were chatting about what we might talk about today you mentioned being presence led and that there is something new coming through you in your business, but it sounds like it's bigger than just your business. So what does that, what does that mean to you being presence led? Yeah. It's, it's one of those commitments or aspirations that I think, um, you know, it's a constant practice and I found that the people I most love working with and supporting are often using the power of presence to help people create transformation. You know, they're often, they're often coaches or healers of some kind. And, um, I used to say heart driven as kind of the way I would describe my people, but, but it's been a refinement. (laughs) And this one, this one actually, uh, kind of plopped in from the universe right after you and I very first spoke a few weeks ago, I like got off that call and went and sat down and the words presence led came through and, you know, so I think most of the people I most enjoy working with would already describe this service that they offer as presence led, like really resting in the moment, relaxed in the body, aware of how our state of being um, creates creates a, a field or, a, or a, 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 an opportunity to orient to the health that is always here. I'm, I'm studying biodynamic cranial sacral therapy right now too. So that's a a very specific point of view of this, that, that, that their health is, the health is everywhere. And we just need to get present enough to allow it to emerge. 
and and it's you know not everyone would say it that way but i think most people i work with have some sort of felt experience and really like professional quality that they've developed where this is a huge part of how they help people um but then there's this challenge of of pulling that all the way through into how we're doing business and how we're how we're doing life and how we're doing marketing and how we're doing you know accounting <laughs> and and um and it's just, it's a term that I'm really, I'm really trying on and playing with and seeing if it resonates with people and that, and the part of, I think my, my role on my own journey is, is to bring it um, more and more to the forefront and see what gets to happen. I don't know, <laughs> you know, there's some part of the presence too is, is like, it's right at that edge of the unknown, but um, it's something I've really been sinking into just as, you know, the thing I'm trying to do all day for myself and um and noticing that the moments and the situations where I can more easily get knocked out of that but I think there's kind of a whole life philosophy wrapped up in it <laughs> um and 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 different people might articulate it differently but there is this sense of of um just sort of the the perfection and the preciousness that that can happen in that moment when when we're when we're in presence we'll pause there but <laughs> something you said Rachel was so beautiful and you said it as a part of your whole soliloquy which was lovely <laughs> it wasn't a soliloquy I'm here right that doesn't count I'm messing I'm thinking I'm abusing my Shakespeare now um, <laughs> oh I think you caught me on a silly day Rachel <laughs> Great. <laughs> but what I really loved in what you said of many things was that health is always there. Mm. You just need to, I don't remember the words you used, but kind of like slow down and tune into it. Yeah, pretty much. And in that, the same is true of presence. Like, it's impossible for us to not be present. In fact, we can't be in the future and we can't be in the past. We can only think that up to create mm -hmm. an experience of not presence, which we can certainly do, and I do all the time. But presence is always available. And the moment we stop doing whatever it is that takes us away from the experience of it, we're there. Yeah. So have you seen that or something like, or does it look different? I mean, that resonates. I got a little teary, actually. I just feel the heat behind my eyes as you say that this, this it's, it's always there. Yeah. I mean, that aligns with everything I've been practicing and learning for the last decade ish of my own, sort of what I would call my spiritual journey. But, but, you know, a lot of those wisdom teachers, it's just a matter of, letting go what's in the way. And I guess, I guess what came alive hearing you say that is that also this idea that whatever's in the way is usually something that was, that has, has goodness in it too, that was usually adaptive or helpful or important at some moment in our life. And, um, but maybe isn't really serving anymore, but so there's that, you know, it's like the, the, the appreciating and then the dropping and then the, and, and there's something so hopeful in that, like, oh, it's always there at any moment. Yeah. yeah. And you just hit the double whammy. Like presence is always there. Health is always there. And all the things that seem like they're keeping us from it are really just our best intentions to try to get back to it. Like misunderstanding that we never left. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of like in the, you can probably come up with a better example in the body than I can because you're, you're in that world. But what I know of the more holistic medicine practices is that, um, like, for example, what comes to mind, I remember when I was working with this very gifted chiropractor, and sometimes my neck would go out. And he would say, oh, you're, I would get like this pain in my neck that if I turn my head, it would just really hurt. And he would say, your muscles are splinting because your vertebra popped out a little bit or you're, you know, you're a little out of alignment. And so your muscles tighten up like a splint to keep it safe. And it's a beautiful 
health mechanism, self-preservation mechanism, healing peace, of course, that becomes problematic if it continues over time and the body creates a, a pattern of posture around it, right? So mm -hmm. the ideal is that that happens temporarily to splint it, and then you come back into alignment, and then those muscles can release again. And that's kind of, there's a grace that mm -hmm. I feel in in just our being, and it's really good to see it, especially when things look rough, when the world looks a little dark, to see that even the things that hurt when our bodies or we ourselves do them, our intention is towards healing. And that when we, when we relax, we can see it. We can see mm -hmm. the way, we can see what's there, what's really there, what is instead of what isn't. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hear in that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I hear in that is is a is a point of view that I um, that I really appreciate and agree with, and but it was coming to mind like, you know, there's there's that um, especially when things get really 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 hard, like the really big stuff. That is the, those extreme examples we like to try to point at. <laughs> Um, that, you know, the things you were just saying that, that it's all, that the presence is always right here or that these, you know, even the pain has its beauty in it, that that, like, that's arguable. Like you can choose to believe something else. We probably, I don't think either of us probably have the ability to prove that to anybody. And I just want to acknowledge that. Mm. And I'm also finding that like holding that as the core hypothesis of everything I'm doing like, I'm like, well, what if I just choose to believe that? And then like, what else rearranges all around me? And I really like what, I really like what rearranges all around me when I, when I choose to believe that. And so, yeah, just, just if that's, if anyone who's listening is finding their mind in a big argument with what we're saying, it's like, well, I don't know. I like, yeah, we, we might not be right. I agree with you. We, we might not be right, but I really like what keeps getting to happen when I, when I, when I keep coming back to, to, to wondering how that's true. And, and I just, I just this week or last week, I, I have a lot of post-it notes all over my life with like little, I'm really into words. And I, I find that these little reminders for my mind, my body's always present, right? But like to get what you were just saying, to get my mind back. Um, and I have a new one I wrote last week that said, even when you don't understand, you're safe. And like, it's not provable, but I really like, I really like believing that. So, you know, so what you're pointing to is something that I have found really powerful about coming from living from, coming from a premise of a truth with a capital T Mm -hmm. that we can't prove with our minds, right? And seeing what happens, like mm -hmm. testing it. We might be able to prove it intellectually, but we can see if we can disprove it by believing, by acting as if, by coming from that premise. Like, okay, my premise is that presence is always there. My mm -hmm. premise is that I'm safe, even though I might not feel that way. And then I can see, is it true? Is it true here? And it might take us on a journey, right? Because then we say, oh, what is safe? Like that's a, that's a big one right there. Something that helped me with that, because I would get all twisted up. The last thing that I'd want to do with someone is bypass the experience they're in, mm -hmm. dismiss it, belittle it or say, you know, get over yourself because you're creating it in your mind. Like, no, that is not helpful for someone, especially, especially when they're in pain. It's not that it's pointing to what you've been clearly experiencing, the hope, the hope that maybe this isn't what it feels like. 
Mm. In fact, this isn't, this is what it feels like, but it's not what is. Mm -hmm. And so safety, I would get tripped up about safety when someone was talking about something that happened to them where they were hurt. Maybe physically, maybe emotionally, um, and it really hurt. Like, how was I safe in that moment? And then I heard an explanation of safety that helped me see something new. Mm. And that was that there were three kinds of safety that as humans we experience. And the one is physical safety. So in this life as humans, clearly sometimes our bodies are in danger. They may be hurt. We can be injured. We get sick. We die. So there is a not safe condition physically for our bodies. Yeah. Now our minds, there's this sense of mental safety. And this is a feeling. It's a feeling that can be very real in the body, right? And so when I feel unsafe mentally, there's nothing happening. Like I actually just released a, a little podcast episode called Catastrophe. And I was feeling one morning, like something's wrong. Everything's wrong. Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. And like, but nothing was wrong. Like that's feeling psychologically or mentally unsafe when I was perfectly safe. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And the, the physical and the mental kind of play off of each other. Right. Like they can, if, if I feel unsafe physically, sometimes it's really mentally. And then I'm thinking that, I'm, you know, it's back and forth and it just goes in a spiral of I'm not safe. And then there's spiritual safety. Now that spiritual safety is the deeper safety. It is the part of us, however we might express it, it doesn't have to be, some people use the word soul, but I think just the life that is us, the intelligence that is us, that enlivens us is. And on that level, that can never be touched. That can yeah. never be hurt. And so while our bodies clearly can be in an unsafe situation and our minds absolutely feel unsafe, knowing this deeper spiritual safety doesn't bypass the other experiences, doesn't dismiss them, but offers comfort and hope in the midst of them. Yeah, I really, I really like that frame. Thank you for that. And I mean, and the truth is like, we are all going to die. There is no such thing as, you know, permanent physical safety. Like, so that's real. And, and then, yeah, the mental layer is, uh, gosh, we're like, mind is so good so good at perceiving every danger and perceiving the current dangers as equal to the past and you know it's like i i have a a, a practitioner i work with who's uh, constantly in our sessions asking me to look around and be like do do does it seem safe in the room you're sitting in right now do you have any thing that's about to hurt you there and the answer is you know i'm lucky i'm lucky for me the answer is pretty much always no i'm safe in my home here and so then it's like okay well then this is a memory that your mind's bringing you of how terrified you feel uh but yeah i really i, I appreciate that and and so then i'm in this like big inquiry right now of of um learning to live and practice as an entrepreneur supporting other entrepreneurs <laughs> uh how do what does it mean if we like are really deeply trusting that spiritual safety trusting the presence is here all the time and we're interacting with this world and this culture where like we'd really like to have money and we'd really like to make an impact on people and we'd really like to be seen and recognized for our gifts and how do we how do we keep orienting to that place of spiritual safety without like flopping over into complacency and not, and, 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 and just sort of not doing anything or magical thinking or like, what is that? It feels like kind of an exciting, I want to say fine line, but I think it's actually just like, it's sort of like surfing. Like it's like, it's just, 
the thing it's constantly changing. We have to constantly like, what, what is it to, to move and create and be and give <laughs> and express while really rooted in that spiritual safety, while aware of the mind and while like caring for the body and not skipping any of it, but not getting warped into somebody else's patterns we don't even agree with. Like that's a big inquiry for me right now. It's the inquiry essentially. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share a little bit of what, what you're seeing so far that is helpful or seems true? Mm. Yeah, I appreciate that question. Um, What seems true <clears throat> is that there's something about it that has a lot to do with the, the interplay between fear and relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I notice in moments where I'm wanting to be creative and wanting to really like express the depth of my gifts or what my soul is wanting to express, I, I'll watch myself get really tight and like clenching my fists here and you know maybe it's not quite that but there's a leaning forward quality and a like urgency that comes in and you know there was a while earlier about a year ago I was really like just in a commitment to journaling every day about something that felt like it was coming through me and I would watch that and I would just be like okay can we relax <laughs> and then the creativity would flow again and and I think there's something really big about that in business it's like the you know we can we can create a lot of things from this like leaned forward, stressed out. I mean, I think most of the things getting created in the world right now are getting created from that leaned forward, stressed out, busy, scared place. Um, and you can, but I don't want to. Uh, and, and I don't, and most of the people that I love working with have tasted something different and they don't necessarily want to either, but there's, but yeah. So that's one thing is just like really being aware of those loops happening in the body and the mind. And like, am I scared right now? Am I scared as I'm creating this? At least being aware of that is really helpful. <laughs> like maybe we still do it if we're scared, it's fine. But is there a way to, is there a way to relax? Could I be more relaxed? Could this be more playful? One of my post-it notes right in front of me right now says play. Um, it's a, I know I need the reminder. Like it's not, it's, I'm, I'm quite serious. I get very serious. It's not, um, but even just, yeah, I think just intention, I guess, is another piece too. something I'm learning about that. Um, the intention for presence, the intention for, uh, for, for something to feel a particular way or come from a particular state of being in consciousness. Those are, those are a couple of things that come to mind. I notice I'm getting tidy. I'm like, okay, but I better answer this right. <laughs> you better because something about. really horrible is going to happen. I know. If you don't. What, if, what, if, what if I don't do it right? What if I miss this? What if this opportunity of talking to you doesn't get to be everything it could have been, Stephanie? <laughs> then, then what? Oh, my stomach gets tight. I mean, I, I watch people. I watch people have reactions. I mean, that's genuinely happening for me and it's good to be able to just be silly about it because I can look around and be like, uh, yeah, no, this is great. Everything's safe. But I also like, especially when it comes to sh like showing up on social media, for example, I'm coaching a client right now who's just kind of dipping their toe in LinkedIn. And I think it's going to be a great place for them to sort of connect with people who can afford the beauty of their work and have it really change their lives. And the amount of that that I'm watching. Oh, I better do it right. Am I doing this one right? Oh, okay, I gotta work really hard at this. It's like, can you just go play? Would you please just go play? <laughs> it's really hard. The answer has been no, which is okay too. <laughs> wow. What a gorgeous real-time example of that, Rachel. Thank you for allowing me to see in that because me too, right? All of us when we have that going on, like, I gotta get this right, gotta get this right, gotta, and how constricted. It's like, if we are this fire hose of creativity, that gotta get this right, constricts everything that can come through. It still comes through, because we're born for it. We're born for creation. Like, this is what we were, we're made for. But it just like, it's like putting your foot on the hose and like the water just doesn't, you know? And what you just did tells me you're not lost in it. 
like you can, if you can see it happening, even if you don't stop it, even if in this moment you can't stop it, you can see yourself spinning up this, I have to do this perfectly. And if I don't, something bad's going to happen. I'm going to miss an opportunity and you feel it in your body, but you're present enough to not only see it, to laugh about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You are so not stuck. You're in it. Mm -hmm. You're in the, you're in the, oh, Mm -hmm. that doesn't have to stop me. That, that doesn't need my attention. Mm -hmm. What if I don't pay attention to that? And this is what, this is a radical notion, by the way, in a world where, you know, you have, it's, and bless our little minds coming up with these dangers to keep us safe. You know, like, oh, what about that? What about that? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, and there's no danger that's going to happen from posting on social media. Like if you post something and somebody doesn't like it, it's, it's not a tiger doesn't jump out and like get you, you know, it's, yeah. I just watched my mind like be like, well, what if, what if you get super canceled? Cause you post something really awful. Like I'm trying to argue against you, even though I agree with you. It's like, you know, <laughs> I thought it too, which is funny. As I said it, I was like, Oh, but Stephanie, should you really say that? Is there a time? And I'm like, no, it's not life and death. Now, could there be some bizarre stream of, of incidents that could lead to the death of someone that we could trace back to one social media? Maybe, but it's not the social media posts and putting, hitting publish that, hurts you. It it doesn't. It isn't. What is it that hurts you? It's this thinking about it that something bad's going to happen if I do it wrong. What if people don't like it? You know, I, I have to, and it's just constrictive and it's okay to feel that. Like everybody does sometimes. When you have that thought, you feel it. I had, I had too. I didn't pay much attention to it though. Cause at this point, especially when I'm being here, I want to be with you, right? Like I want to be with Rachel right now. I do not want to be listening to bullshit thinking. And I'm just much more interested in what's happening. What is than what I think about it in these moments, especially all the time. Of course not. Of course not. Especially when there's not a person in front of me to like, give my attention to, and then my thoughts are getting really noisy and uh, 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 okay. Oh, but the more I just notice it, the more I see that I actually, that has nothing for me. It, it offers nothing of value other than to let me know the quality of thinking I have in the moment. Like really there's one to test. Don't believe me, right? Test it out. Does this have value for me? other than to call me back home. That's it. Because when I'm home, that's where the good stuff shows up. That's where I get those creative hits and ideas come from. That's where I find the peace I've been looking for because it's there. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm finding too that being presence led is essentially you know, I, I'm guessing a lot of people maybe have tried meditation or have meditation practice and, you know, you, you're there, you're concentrating, you're focusing on your breath or emptying your mind or the same, you know, lots of ways to meditate, but, uh, you know, it's, your mind's this, this puppy running off. <laughs> like, it's like, especially when you first start, but you know, even 10, 15, 20 years in, it's like, Oh, there goes the mind again. And, and it's similar here. It's like, if you were ever to think that like, you should be, I mean, I think we, we think this, but you know, you're not going to get very far. If you think like, Oh, I've been meditating this long. I should, I should be done having to go chase my mind down. Like, and it's similar here. It's the same, it's the same practice. It's like, I've been posting on social media for years now. I should be done having to go chase my mind. down. It's like, well, probably not actually. Like this is kind of the game of being in a human body with a human mind. It's like the, you know, we we can learn all sorts of new ways to play with it, but it is an ongoing practice. You don't get to just tell your mind, hey, that's not useful once and then be like done for the day. How nice would that be? <laughs> these thoughts that we feel, these thoughts that we experience, they create a reality. So that's the good stuff too. Yeah. Like that's the, you know, my my experience of you is created here through my thoughts and the feelings. Otherwise, 
in this space of consciousness as me. Otherwise, I couldn't have a real experience of you. So it lets me, it actually lets me have an experience of connection with another person. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to lose that for the world. And so, yeah, it comes with also the ability to create scary things. That's okay. I can see myself do it. It's like, these are the colors I've got to work with. I've got this infinite palette of thought and emotion in front of me. And I can just kind of pick which ones. That doesn't mean I have absolute control of them. It doesn't, I'm not saying mind can control your mind, control your thoughts like that. I have tried that. You know, I had a, a history with neuro linguistic programming where you control your state, control your state. And people are like forcing a smile to make themselves feel good. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, like that, it, that doesn't work. Yeah. But there is influence. There is, yeah. as soon as you notice, oh, I'm painting with really scary colors right now. Then it occurs to you, what if I didn't? You can still do it. Then there's choice that opens up. Then there's a little bit of space, even if you can't put that color down right now. And sometimes I can't. Yeah. Yeah, the questions, like the opportunity for different questions feels alive. I'm also thinking some mentors of mine talk about with awareness comes choice, you just said, and then there's this layer with choice comes responsibility. Mm. It's like an interesting thing to think about. That's, that's their point of view. Like this idea yeah. of like, what's yours? I'm still finding it. I think, I mean, there's a way in which I, I noticed myself get tight when I said that uh. I was like this, I'm, I'm really, I've, I've, um, my response. And so on the one hand, I agree, like there is a way, like, you know, it's up to us to, to create the world we want to see. And it's up to us to show up in that world as, as thoroughly as possible in the ways that we want to. And, and so I do agree with that, but I think I'm not really quite fully ready to like take that on wholeheartedly because there's still some, some past relationships with responsibility that I've that I've had patterns of using that to be like, I can just feel a tension in my mm -hmm. in the center of my chest as I say it. I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm not quite ready to fully take that on mm -hmm. as that. That's a thought that, that maybe isn't fully supportive of my creativity right now, but I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, you know, we're finding an edge of my thinking right here. It's like, cool. What do I, what do I want to feel? Honestly, I'm like, oh, I probably have some feelings I need to feel about that, that I'm in this moment, not fully willing to pause and feel, because I don't know what's going to come through and I don't want to take the time and I don't want to be that vulnerable in your podcast. Like, what if I start crying? Cause I'm, I'll be okay. But it's like, you know, so yeah, bookmarking that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And fully respecting all of the feels that you're having right now. Yeah. And how cool that you're, you're giving me a little window into that. It's <laughs> really beautiful. It's like, this is, this is what it's like to be a real human being, really feeling things. Mm. And you are modeling something that we don't, unfortunately, I think, and I do, but not everyone does get a chance to see someone actually express that and be okay with it and not need to change it right away. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And being kind enough to yourself, say, hey, bookmark it for later, you know? And whenever I feel that constriction about something, I know that whatever thought that is, is not serving me. Mm -hmm. The truth doesn't hurt like that. Now, that doesn't mean it might not be factually true. Like, factually, are we responsible for our choices? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean when we have the freedom to choose, we're responsible in that sense. But I can think that like, and I see many of these presence led, heart led, however we describe them, loving, serving entrepreneurs. It's my responsibility or my responsibility to fulfill my calling, you know, this, because I can see this, I have to share this with the world. And like, if I don't, I'm not fulfilling my destiny. And I mean, that's a burden and that feels heavy and that's not what the truth feels like. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another way and it might be an exploration for you like, okay, so if it's true that I'm responsible in what way and one 
one way I've heard it expressed, and I really like it, is it's not responsibility, like I have to take on the burden of it. It's I'm response able. I am able to respond. When I have choice, I am able to respond. And the truth is that I see in myself and other people is that we're always responding to the best of our ability to see clearly. Now, it's variable. Because if I'm having one of those really shit days, I'll go back to my metaphor, and I've been painting with sad colors all day long, I'm probably more likely to respond from that sad lens. And my actions and behaviors, my thoughts, certainly my feelings are going to be colored by it, especially if I don't see that I'm doing it. But on a day that it's like I'm painting with all the the pretty colors, the happy colors, the joyful colors, the gratitude colors, the experience of me is cleaner and clearer, but it's always the best I can see in the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the the truth doesn't feel that way. That's really standing out to me from what you said. I I often, you know, I write a newsletter called the Magic Words of the Week, and I have a whole bank of things to potentially have be magic words. <laughs> and one of them is truth feels good. There's this way. It's like it's like there's that big. You just did it. You just took a deep breath. Mm-hmm, <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. there's that. That's like oh, it's like oh God, thank God somebody finally said that. Or just like, you know, even if it's a hard thing to admit, it's like there is a way that in the body, like, <sighs> there's the breath, there's the congruence. And then, yeah, so I'm just appreciating remembering that too. I haven't written that one yet, but we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe mm. I will by the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it, because I have heard so many times the truism, you know, the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth hurts, but it's not the truth that hurts. It's my thinking about what I'm calling the truth that can hurt, what it means about me, the story I make up about it, how I blame myself and, or I blame someone else that hurts, but not the truth. There's this gorgeous quote from Ramana Maharshi, and hopefully I will get it right. I've only looked at it a million times. It's very (laughs) short, but this is the gist of it. If it's not exactly this. Let come what comes, let go what goes, Mm. see what remains. Mm. And I think what you've been sharing is what this is pointing to. It's like to watch what comes and goes, what changes, what's, what is, what just is, what's left. That's the spiritual truth of us. What's left? What doesn't change? (laughs) My body, my thoughts, my feelings, my personality. Man, that changes. It comes and goes and shifts like the weather. But there's something of me, the space of me, the aliveness of me just is. (laughs) Mm. There is something coming alive that as I hear you, I like want to point at, Mm, which is, I do think we're under indexed on the body in these questions and, you know, especially like business entrepreneurship, finding our way. I think, I think the mind's super, in my experience, the mind is super duper, duper fast. You know, we can go to Mars. You just did. I just said it. You just went to Mars. (laughs) done. (laughs) You thought about it. We all did. Like, so, you know, there's a reason it's this mind is associated with the air element. Usually like, it's just, and, and, um, and that's awesome. It's, it's valuable. It's really helpful. (laughs) And, and like, there's the spiritual, completely unchanging truth that's there as well. And, and I think we're under index of most of us, mm. uh, on the way the body can mediate and, and the slow, slower rhythm of the body and the information and the, and the complexity and depth of information contained in our bodies. And, you know, there's still, there's still maybe a healthy dose of skepticism. We don't always need to believe that if, if something's tightening in there, it's telling us a story about right now. Um, but, but I just, that's something that I really, 
have spent a lot of time and attention thinking about and being with and practicing in my own business and in my own life is really like using the body as this resource of good mm-hmm. decision making and of being in presence and you know just just again uh as a valuable ally to ask mm-hmm. questions of not not just in spiritual practice but in the practice of business and showing up and giving gifts and being of service and so um so that's something I believe and practice a lot. And then I'm also like, oh, and I also am like really obsessed with words. Like that's the main thing. My my business is called Magic Words. I do a lot of words. I've, you know, I've been a writer for a long time. I help people with words. I have post-it notes all over my house. I really believe in the power of words, you know, and, and magic words are these words that like, you know, there's, there's abracadabra that like creates something. And then there's please is a magic word, but they're like these words that really create an effect out in the world could argue they all do, but some of them more than others. <laughs> um, so I'm just also really in this inquiry and game of like, okay, body, words, reality, presence, getting things done, exchanging money for it, <laughs> giving or get what, how do we pull Like, what is a soup? What are, what are all the ways we can make that soup? And like, what's my job to play with people in that? And, um, yeah, I don't even like, I'm like, I don't even know, like what happens when I'm feeling, I'm feeling in my body. Some part of me feels less clear. There's a moment where we were talking about responsibility. I got a little less present. And so now I'm like, did I even, what did I just even say? Is that useful? And I'm noticing that. So I'm just going to pause with that. Yeah. <sighs> it's really interesting When I feel confused, because sometimes I do, I'm thinking about in particular in a meeting with a bunch of people who have a bunch of different thoughts, and there's like a lot of stuff happening. At least I'm noticing a lot of stuff happening in me, and sometimes I feel confusion about it. And what I'm learning is that that's what if that's not a problem it's not a sign that something's off it's just like what is confusion really Mm. something seems like something isn't where i think it should be or i'm not sure where i am or something it could just mean things are moving around Mm. you know and i'm calling that confusion but that's actually really good when we're shifting things like it's really Mm. good when we're looking at new ideas sometimes and it's okay. Like that confusion will settle and then you land somewhere and you look again without the confusion and you'll see, maybe you see something a little different. Like it's like if we're in a dust storm all of a sudden, like I'm confused, I can't see. Right. And if it settles and then we look out and now we can see the Vista, we know where we're at and maybe it's a different place. So I think that's really wise to just notice it and I hear a compassion and a gentleness for the body and what you're saying too, like for the wisdom that comes through the body, not only the mind. And it can sound like I'm using a lot of words around thought. It sounds like it's very mental focused and, you know, you're not the first person who's expressed that to me. Um, But my experience is that it is one, Mm. you know, that mind body thing is like, it's just, communicating it's the dance um of our experience so yeah not to downplay or push that body you know to honor and be with it and the wisdom that moves through it so that's that's really beautiful too Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, the story I'm pushing against isn't so much you exactly as a a few hundred or more years of (laughs) cultural, uh, just prioritization of mind over body and the Mm. sense of conquering, that sense of conquering 
Mm. Like, yeah. So I do, I think, I do think there is often a need for a bit of a, a pushback in ourselves to be against um, ways of being we've all been very steeped in that maybe aren't what we want to keep choosing. Yeah. I, I let my attention drift for a moment because oh, I, I have this doubt in my mind about quotes of things and I want to get them right. Okay. So that's what's happening in Stephanie's head here. Right. And there's this line from a poem by Mary Oliver, um, Wild Geese, mm -hmm. that says, I'll just read the first couple lines because it's so beautiful. Yeah. You, do, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. I love that one. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling you would know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I felt that. Let the soft animal body love what it loves, need what it needs, ask for what it asks for, feel what it feels, the whole thing. I think that is a part of being human, this, this soft, vulnerable body, not to be dominated by the mind or pushed to exhaustion. Sometimes we do that to ourselves, but honored and cared for and nourished. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really like, I don't think I have all the answers for this, but I'm really trying to stand for the question of like, how do you get visible and grow a business and attract clients while doing that, while letting the soft animal of your body do love what it loves. Because I, I trust that there's, there's some creative path forward that isn't what 50 people have told you you have to do <laughs> or, or some guru, what works for some guru who loves a thing you don't love. Like, and, um, yeah, but it's, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know all the answers there. I'll, but I think our bodies know a lot of the answers there. Mm. And there is some, and there is some amount of like, also it's probably not the best idea to just completely ignore the other out there or the, the way that algorithm works or, you know, the way minds interpret stories or what other people are thinking of you. There's just this tension there, this creative tension of how do I let the soft animal in my body love what it loves and like really, really trust there's deep wisdom and guidance and possibility in that. And then also not completely tune out my, that I'm trying to be in relationship with other and, mm. and the, the soft animal of their body is an important part of this equation <laughs> and their mind and all of our minds. And yeah, there's, I, I, there's, there's kind of a paradox in it. And um, somebody said recently to me that where where there is paradox, there is God. I was like, ooh, that's a fun one to play with. Like, hmm. I like sitting with that question, Rachel, of like, how can we, how do we? It doesn't look like. So when I zoom out, it doesn't look like a paradox because mm -hmm. it's one, you know, there mm -hmm. is a, it's like, there is a, there is a movement. There is a, the movement of life. There is an aliveness through me, through you, through us in this moment that we get to be a part of. We're active participants and yet it's like we surrender to it and flowing with it. And it includes your soft animal body, my soft animal body, the, the thoughts that we are having, the communication, the words that we are sharing, the people that we're speaking to, even though they're not present with us in this moment for us, but they are as they're listening, like it's the whole world is here, right? And, yeah. and that there's no contradiction in that until I start thinking about these things as separate, which I also can. There's usefulness in that too. So, yeah, that's cool. Hmm. 
something just happened in my body as I let that idea like wash through something relaxed the that I can think of these things as separate and also what what happens when I don't yeah Yeah. for me what happened when I don't was something that felt really good in my body just now <laughs> so yeah thank Yeah. you for that And how beautiful. How beautiful for you to notice it. How beautiful for you to see that expression of it in your body. Mm. Oh. So is there maybe a sentence or two that you'd like to offer for listeners from this place? Mm. Yeah, let me check. What's coming through is something like you already know, like there's some part of you that already knows. Oh, I'm getting teary with that. Maybe that's part of what I needed to hear too. But mm. yeah. That's beautiful. <sighs> Thank you so much, Rachel. And if someone is listening and watching and loves the inquiry that you're in, you use that, the, the many beautiful inquiries you're in, um, your love of words, your magic words, and being with these presence-led entrepreneurs on their journey, and they want to learn more about what you're up to and maybe read a little something of your writing, where is the best place for them to go to do that? Yeah. Well, um, my website is magicwords.marketing. And if they're interested, probably the best way to get to know me better is this weekly newsletter that I send that people come up to me in, in person and tell me they like it. I mean, I'm sort of like, okay, I think I'm doing something. I just had that happen on Sunday at a community dance event. It's when I had no idea it was on my email list, just came up. It's like, I love your email. So, um, People seem to like it. So that's magicwords.marketing slash sign up. It's every Friday. They're pretty short. Um, you can see the archives there too, if you just want to get a flavor. And then I have a resource I've been playing with. I don't know if it's like, if it, if it appeals to anybody, I'd love for you to have it, but it's um, a set of journal prompts I created in response to um, some people on their journey, um, which is 15 questions to ask as your soul business is gestating. And it could be, it could be a new business. It could also just be a new project or a next development, but it's, it's a bunch of questions to really just help people get present and curious with, um, some kind of wide open questions of what's coming through so they can find that, um, as well. I'll actually create a, a page just for your folks. That's magic words. Marketing slash wildspire, where they can find those things. So. Oh, and maybe lucky. I'll get inspired to put something else up there. Who knows? I create a lot of little resources and then they don't always end up on my website. And my website, I'm in the in the middle. I've been in the middle for about two months of rewriting my own website. So uh, who knows if it'll sort of be the version from three or four years ago or a fresh one about about presence. But either way, it's, you know, it's uh, that's where they can find me. And I'm also fairly active on LinkedIn. So cool. I shall post all the links. <laughs> and make them readily available um, mm -hmm. in the description of this video and also on the blog. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so Stephanie. much, Rachel. Thank you. <sighs> yeah. What a rich, what a rich inquiry. I really appreciate how much uh, I found some unknown corners in my own thinking and mind. So thanks <laughs> for the time together. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.